If you've ever been given imagery for a website build and don't quite know how to implement it, then this video is going to cover all of the bases. We're going to look at creative ways that you can add imagery to a Webflow website that isn't just plopping it there next to a text box. So we're going to look at image backings, overflowed images, image fades, full split sections, image with a box, and a picture of Tom Hanks. Now, is it legal to use a photo of Tom Hanks on your website? Well, when I called my lawyer, he told me, Nikolai, I'm not your lawyer, please stop calling this number. But he didn't say no. Anyway, let's get into it. Number one, image backings. So here I have a two grid section. And so what I'll do is I'll drop an image in the first block and then my text box in the second block. And now on this left image, I'm gonna scroll down and give this image a box shadow. And I'll make the blur zero. The distance I'm gonna make, let's try 25. And I'm gonna pop it to the top left. And now I can change the color of this background. And because this background shadow is making the image look a bit close to the left, I'm gonna actually just add a transformation a little bit to the right. And now with this done, I can do a couple of things. I can add a hover effect, and so when I hover over it, the background comes all the way in. And of course for that, we'll wanna add a transition for the box shadow. Or I might wanna add a border to the image. And if I make the border the same color as the background, it gives that colored background some space from the image. Number two is overflowed images. So here I have an image of my product dashboard, but it's quite detailed. There's quite a lot of detail in this image. And so rather than leave it like this, I can actually overflow the image to go off the screen. I'll give it a width of 150%. I'll take the max width off it. And now it's going past the edge of the website screen. Now, because it's sitting within the container, if I view it and I enlarge the size of the screen, it's going to show me the rest of the image anyway. The only other thing that I'll need to do if I do this is make sure that the section that the image is in has the overflow off. Otherwise, a section like this is going to give the website a horizontal scroll. Number three is image fades. So I'm going to drop a new div in here and I'll give this div a name. And the width is going to be 50% of the section. And I'm going to make this position absolute. So this div is going to stick to the right side of the section. And now I'm going to add in an image. And I'll make it cover that section. Now this image cover is using 100% of the width, 100% of the height, and the fit is set to cover. Now I'm going to add in one more div, which is going to be the actual fade. So I'll add in one more div. This one's also going to be absolute. Let's make it 80% of the div. And it's going to sit on the left side of this div. Now we're going to add a background color. We'll change this to gradient. On the left side, we'll start with lime. We'll take the opacity down to zero. And on the right side, now it's going to also be lime. And we'll change the angle to 270. Now that section is fading into the imagery, no matter how wide the section is. And now I can go in and add in some content to the section. And if we preview it, the content is staying inside of the container, but the image is going to the edge of the screen. Number four is full split sections. So here I've added a new section in and I'm gonna give it a name. And we'll change the display to grid. And I won't need any gaps for this. And I'll actually only need one row. And so this is the base for our split section. So we'll pop our two new divs in each side. And this left side is going to be where we're going to add the image. And then the right side is where we're going to add the actual text or the, the content. So I'll quickly give these divs a name. And on the left hand side, I'll just drop in an image. And I'm going to change this to an image cover which again has 100% width, 100% height, and is using the fit of cover. Now on the right hand side, I'm gonna add in my actual content. So I'll drop that in, and we'll give this div some padding so that it's not rubbing up against the image. So right now the height of this section is actually being based off of the image. So I can also add some top and bottom padding so that it's instead being based on the uh, right hand side. And let me quickly add a background color to this section. 
And depending on how I want to size the section, I can leave it at that, or I can change the height to 100% viewport height. So that's 100% of the actual screen. And I'll just give it a minimum height in case the screen's too small. And I'll quickly align the text box in the vertical center of this div by going into my content div and changing that display to flex box and then aligning it to the center. And now when we preview that, it's looking pretty good. Now as we go down to the different screen sizes, I can simply uh, get rid of this image div or I can stack them. So I can either go into my split sections and I'll just uh, take the columns away so they're sitting on top of each other. And so now that image is sitting on top of the div and I'll just make sure the size of this section isn't based on the viewport height anymore. So I'll take that away. And that's how we can use imagery with full split sections. Number five, image with a box. Now there's probably a better name for this, but the image and the div are kind of sitting side by side, but then the div is kind of popping off um, kind of above the image, just kind of overlapping it. So here we've created a new section with a container and we'll drop in the grid element and we're gonna want uh, two columns and only the one row and we'll take away, uh, we'll take away that gap. Now the image side is actually gonna be larger than the, the div side. So we'll uh, change this to two, we'll hit done We'll just give this a name and we'll drop two divs in here, copy and paste that and we'll quickly name them. So I'm going to drop an image in the second section. And I'll make it an image cover. Now I can either keep the height of the image that's there or change the height of the image by changing the height of this image block. And now for the content block, we'll give that a background color. We'll add in our content and then we'll just give it some padding. And now we're gonna adjust the positioning of this div so that it's overlapping the image. And so we'll change the position to relative and it's gonna be pushed down, let's say 40 pixels. And now we can push it right to overlap the image, but since we want everything to line up uh, across the, the containers, uh, instead we're just gonna change the width. Change it to 115%, and now that's gonna overlap that div. And now since it's pushed down a bit, it's uh, thrown off some of the padding, so we'll add that padding in uh, to the margin, the, the same amount that we pushed the, the div down, which was 40 pixels. And the only other thing we'll do is because the text isn't fitting the div properly, uh, we'll just change the aligning on the grid to align from the top and not stretch the full way. And that way the, the text snugly fits the actual text box. And those are a few creative ways to add imagery to your Webflow website. And I'll cover more ways in a different video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.